Hello, and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Today I'm going to look at the Times um, normal cryptic crossword, and I'm going to deliberately focus on, um, you know, taking my time going through this and giving those of you who are new to cryptic crosswords as much chance as possible to to understand how to approach these clues. So the first thing we need to remember whenever we look at any cryptic clue is that there is always a definition. So in, in some sense, you can always reduce a cryptic crossword to a quick crossword if you can read the clues the correct way. Now, in almost all clues, the definition appears either at the beginning or the end of the clue. And part of the skill, obviously, is trying to work out which end of the clue is our straightforward definition. And there are, there are some clues that we can look for in terms of how clues are worded, um, in terms of how we might go about this. So let's let's have a look at six across. Um, okay, so this is a nice, this is a relatively easy clue. So jewel, a girl finally displayed after work. Now, my main technique, I suppose, that I recommend for trying to work out which end of the clue is which, is to look for instructional words in the clue. By which I mean, if we, if we look at this clue, we can see a couple of things. We see the word finally, a girl finally, and displayed after work. Now, th this displayed after language is trying to indicate the position of something. Now, if something's trying to indicate the position of something, that implies its wordplay. What, what, what words like this are doing, they, they're trying to shuffle up bits of wordplay in order to create a whole word. So, this gives me the clue that jewel is probably the answer. So can you think of a four-letter jewel that might go in here? And you should be thinking of words like ruby, uh, opal. Um, and once you've had a thought about things like that, then it's simply justifying which one of those is going to fit fit the rest of it. Now, how, how to determine that? Well, there are uh, words like work here has... Um, has a standard abbreviation that you often see in a cryptic crossword, which is OP, O P, which is shortened, it's an abbreviation for opus. So a work of music is an OP, O. Now, and here we've got a girl finally displayed after work. So that suggests that this clue might start with O P. Then the A here is just this A, this A in the clue, dual A, and then girl finally, well, that's the last letter of the word girl. So we get opal, um, which we were suspicious about simply from our definition of jewel. Um, so I've gone through that clue in quite a lot of detail. I won't go through every clue in that much detail, but it's just to give you an example of what we're looking for. And I'll try and do or discuss the rest of the clues in that style. So composure once discovered in American writer. Okay, so here, um, here we had displayed after, and here we've got discovered in. Okay, so here the, the words discovered in are making me think, okay, well, I've got to put something in something else. And the thing I've got to put um, around the outside is this American writer. An American writer beginning with P? Well, there is a very common one, again, that you, you see because it's a short number of letters and a very famous writer. We should be thinking of a poet and the raven and Annabelle Lee and things like that. So this word is a five-letter word that means composure that's got po, head growl and po, around the outside of ones. One often is a, an I, it looks like a one I think, or, and then um, apostrophe s is in the middle of po. We get poise, which of course means composure. Rose to a high point, like some tits. <laughs> a slightly risque clue here. Um, okay, but I think what uh, this is getting at is not somebody's um, uh, somebody's chest, but more like somebody's crest. Um, so if we were to think of a word that um, uh, describes some tits as in birds, we might think of the word crested, oh, crested tits. Rose to a high point, well, that also means crested. So this is a double definition. 
um, and it just required us to read it in the correct way. Let's have a look at 15 across. Piece of furniture employed in one theatre or another. Um, okay, this is a slightly, a slightly more difficult clue because it's a. Uh, when you see a question mark in a clue, you have to be prepared to, you know, think laterally, I suppose. So, piece of furniture here is actually the definition. So we need to think of a piece of furniture that would fit here, and there is there is a very obvious one, I think, and it's the word dresser. But the hard part about this clue is actually understanding why it's the correct answer, because in these other clues, especially these two up here in the top right hand corner, we need to shuffle letters around in order to create the answer. Now here, there's absolutely no shuffling around. This employed in one theatre or another question mark is referring to the fact that there are there are two types of theatre I think you might find in life. There is um, the theatre you go to see a play in and there's the operating theatre where you might uh, have an operation. Now, what the clue is getting at here is that you might find a dresser in both of those types of theatre. In, in, when you go and see a play, there, there might be a dresser who dresses the actors. And when you go in, into theatre uh, to have an operation, somebody will dress a wound. So this, this is why this clue is, um, is phrased the way it is. A more unusual clue, I would say. Most bad-tempered Italian brought up in County Street. Okay, well, here again, let's see if we can see some instructional words. And here I think you've got the words brought up in County, brought up in County Street. And it, this is again very much suggesting this is all part of wordplay here. So probably this is a nine letter word which means most bad tempered. And a little tip, if you see the words like most bad tempered, you can be pretty sure it ends EST. It might even end IEST because it's sort of indicating the superlative. Now, knowing that, you might be able to come up with the answer already. Street is very often abbreviated to ST, and you can see that at the end there. So we need a short word for a county, and then Italian brought up. Well, Italian is very often abbreviated to IT. So Italian brought up would be saying reverse the IT to give TI. So if we think this has TI in the middle, given that what I just said about this might end in TIEST, we might have this construction. So we need a five letter word for a county, beginning with S, ending in E, that we're going to put round the edge to give a nine letter word, which means most bad tempered. And Pause if you need to, but the answer, I think, is shirtiest. Can't see the answer there. Preacher abused Morse upset about wrongdoing. Whew. Um, well, I want this to be something like sermonist or something like that because I can see that an anagram of Morse, Morse would give me um, these letters. Oops. Sermonizer maybe. Let's have a look at that. You can see that's got a reversal of sin in it. So how is this working? Ah, okay. Yes. So this is this is an anagram of Morse, which is being included by abused Morse, i.e. you abuse the letters of the word Morse. And then you've got to reverse two things, and the indicator of the reversal here is the word upset. If you upset something in a down clue, it suggests that you you lift it up, you upset it. Um, and you've got a reversal here of RE, which of course means about, if something is re something, it is about it, and then a wrongdoing. Well, a wrongdoing is a sin. 
So reverse RE and SIN, put it at the end of the anagram of Morse, and we get Sermonizer. But any questions, please leave them in the chat, and do subscribe to the channel if these, these videos are helping you. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.